Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Loving Jesus, Father, come, Lord Jesus, and teach us your good word, Lord. You are a good teacher, the greatest teacher of all the time, Lord Jesus. We want to listen from your sweet words, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord. Come, Father. Speak, Lord Jesus. Speak, Lord Jesus. We, your servant, we, your children, we hear, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' loving name, amen. Today, beloved, as I was meditating uh, some few days back, uh, we will shall meditate on the subject, how the Lord fulfills his plan in his children's life, in our lives. How his purpose is fulfilled in our lives. If we read uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, there is a very beautiful verse given in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. There it is written, being confidence, confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The one who has begun a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Beloved, my dear brother, my dear sister, the Lord who has called you, who has begun a good work in you, will complete it, oh, until the day of Jesus Christ. What a hopeful assurance we have. What a good, oh, hope we have. The Lord is working in us and he will complete us. He will complete. But in this world when we live, we see many trials, many tribulations, many sorrows. John chapter 16 verse 33, Jesus said, in this world, my children, you will have tribulation. You will have sorrows. You will have trials. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have oh, won the victory on the cross for you, for you, for every one of us. So we are his children and he will make us victorious. Probably you might be going through some trials, through some tribulation. You might be in a very stressful situation with hopelessness. What will happen with so many worries? Remember, the Lord is working in your life. And the wow, Lord is fulfilling. He will fulfill his good plans for your life because Jesus has won the victory. I would like to uh, take your attention to another very powerful incident that is mentioned in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, 44. There, last time, Jesus went into the garden of Gethsemane. And Bible says, Luke chapter 22, verse 20, uh, 40 to 44. Here, there, there it is written. Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane and he began to be very sorrowful and he was withdrawn from them about a stone throw and he knelt down and prayed saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours will be done. He was in so much sorrow. He must, was so much in agony. All the Oh, human beings, grief, sorrow, and agony was laid upon Jesus. And he was crying, kneeling down and praying. He knew he had to suffer. People will beat him. People will spit upon him, will pluck the beard from his face, and will punch him. And, oh, crown of thorns will be, oh, planted on his head. And he had to bear, bear the nails on his hand, nails on his he, being the creator, he has to go through suffering. He was in a very excruciating stress. He was in extreme stress. All the anguish, all the burdens of the people came upon him in the garden of Gethsemane. There it is written, verse 43 says, There an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly than his feet became like great drops of blood. So much anguish, so much oh, sorrow, so much of agony, Jesus suffered. So much of grief, Jesus suffered in the garden of Gethsemane. For whom? For us, for you, 
for you, for you, for every one of you. He suffered the grief, took all the grief, all the sorrow upon himself. And it is written, his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. A man of God saw while he was praying this garden of Gethsemane in a vision. There he saw the devil anxiously waiting. Oh, Jesus will deny. He will say, no, no, I don't want to go to the cross. I don't want to bear the, the sins of the people, the sickness of the people, the sorrow of the people, the griefs of the people. I don't want to bear. I have to suffer so much. I don't want to bear. The devil was anxiously waiting that Jesus will say no to the cross. But when Jesus twice prayed, Lord, if this, if you will, it is written in 42, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Father, if it is your will, take this cup of suffering, sorrow, agony, pain from me. And twice he prayed. And third time he said, Lord, oh, Father, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. As soon as he said, Father, let your will be done. The devil was so much oh, 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 defeated and he was filled with shame. Oh, and he said, alas, I have lost. I have lost. I have lost. Beloved, that Jesus took all the sorrow and the grief of the people. If you read Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5, the Bible says, oh, Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transactions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 17, there also Bible says that Jesus took carried all our infirmities, all our sickness. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 says, Jesus himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. He himself took all the infirmities, all our sickness. Beloved, this Jesus, when we remember his Oh, the suffering while he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. The sweat was coming like great drops of blood. Medical doctors say when blood pressure, oh, due to blood pressure, the sweat gets transformed into blood, great drops of blood. Beloved, probably my brother, my sister, you are suffering from blood pressure. Remember, Jesus took that blood pressure, that pain, that blood pressure upon himself. He tasted that when you are suffering with high blood pressure today, when you are suffering with low blood pressure, when you cry to Jesus, remember Lord you in the garden of Gethsemane, you had to suffer this blood pressure for me. Jesus will be moved with compassion, moved with his love and he will remember, oh yes I suffered, I took all their infirmities, all their sickness, let me heal. He will heal. Shall we close our eyes and just remember our relatives, our parents. So many people are suffering from blood pressure. Close your eyes. We will remember those who are suffering from blood pressure in your home, in your relatives, in your friend circle. Oh, Jesus will heal. Jesus promised as you are preaching this word that I took their, all their sickness, all their blood pressure diseases, all their, I will heal. I will be moved with compassion. I will remember how in the garden of Gethsemane I shed my blood. Sweat come like, came like a great drop of blood. Lord Jesus, as your children, Father, are suffering with blood pressure, in the name of Jesus, Father, oh, be moved with your compassion, Father. Let their blood pressure become normal, Lord Jesus. We remember all the relatives, all the, oh, our near and dear ones that are suffering with blood pressure, Lord Jesus. You said that you will heal the blood pressure. Yes, Lord, let the blood pressure become normal, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, Father. We pray for all those YouTube 
watchers, those who will be watching from different countries, Lord Jesus. Whoever watches, Lord Jesus, right now, their blood pressure become normal in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, due to this, oh, the sorrow, the sickness, the grief that Jesus took, that's why First John, if you read verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 8, there also, Bible says, the blessings that we receive due to the suffering of Jesus. First John chapter 3, verse 8 says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. He might destroy the works of the devil. Probably you are sitting with a sorrowful heart, with trials, tribulations, the works of the devil are destroying your family. You are destroying your life. Probably you are addicted to so many things. So you are crying to the Lord, I am not able to leave my smoking habit. I am not able to leave my drinking habit. My family life is miserable. I am having so much oh, oh, fights between husband and wife and the children are not obeying. They are disobedient. When you see the work of the devil, remember, remember, Jesus, your Savior came to destroy the work of the devil. Destroy the work of the devil. And he will destroy whatever the works of the devil in your life. Jesus came to destroy the oh, works of the devil. So don't lose hope, my brother, my dear sister. Jesus is the victor and he will give you the victory because he came to destroy the worlds of the devil. He will destroy all the worlds of the devil. He will bless you with peace. He will bless you with good health. He will bless you. Oh, he will increase you. He will prosper you because he came to destroy all the worlds of the devil. He will remove all the evil spirits, the oppressions of the evil spirit. He will fill your heart, your mind with his peace and joy. Beloved, this great God, Jesus Christ, as we live in this world, when a child is born in a family, a son or a daughter, his parents have so many oh, plans for, they begin planning for my son, my daughter will do uh, schooling and he will do his uh, engineering or medical like that, he will marry like that. So many plans they make. Our God, Father, when we become his children, when we say, Jesus, come into our, my heart, wash me with your blood, forgive my sins, he becomes our Father and he starts planning. He starts planning for our lives, for his children's life. Therefore, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, what plans he has for uh, us as his children. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Beautiful verse. The word of God is there. For I, God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Says the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. The Lord is thinking. The Lord is thinking. And what are his thoughts? Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope. My beloved, the same God, say Jesus Christ says in another wonderful verse in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. The Bible says that is also a very wonderful, powerful verse. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. He is able to do far more exceedingly. Above all that we ask or think. Probably you might be sitting with sorrow. Some darkness may be enveloping your life. But remember the Lord says as promised in Psalms 18, 28. My children, I will enlighten your darkness. I will enlighten your darkness. And he will oh, fulfill his plan. His, uh, when we read in the Bible. Maria Magdalene, after Jesus died on the cross, they buried him on a, in a tomb. And ma the disciples of Jesus were really heartbroken and they were crying. Particularly Mary Magdalene, where the, the disciple of Jesus, she was delivered by Jesus from uh, many evil spirits. 
and she went, Bible says, in John chapter 20, over on the uh, third day she rose early in the morning and she went at the tomb of Jesus to oh, uh, put spices on the dead body of Jesus dead body of Jesus and when she went, went with a sorrowful heart I will my savior my deliverer is dead my sweet my precious Jesus is dead who delivered me from the clutches of the evil spirit is dead and he took the spices to emblem Jesus body but when he she went to the tomb she saw the big stone that Roman shoulder had put to God that big uh, stone was removed and there was no body. She was weeping, oh, crying, where, where my, oh, Jesus, they have, the body of Jesus, my Savior's body, they have uh, taken and she was weeping and crying. Bible says, while she was weeping, Jesus himself came and asked her, Mary, Mary, why you are weeping? Why you are weeping? Oh, her heart was filled with joy. My Savior is alive. My Deliverer is alive. My Redeemer is alive. She must have sang songs. She must have jumped. Oh, my Savior is alive. She must have been so much overjoyed, my beloved. She went to see the dead body of Jesus. But the resurrected Jesus, the living Jesus met her. And who oh, he gave his vision. She was filled with so much joy. If you read in uh, Genesis chapter 28, there are also a very wonderful incidences mentioned. Genesis chapter 28. There we see that uh, a incidents from the life of uh, Jacob is mentioned. He took the blessing in a wrong way. And his brother tried to kill him. So he was running. And uh, he went away. Uh, away from his home and in the wilderness he was lying one day and uh, he couldn't sleep well also so it is written that he took stones of that place and put at his head as he lay down in that place well he was sleeping with a broken heart using a stone as a pillow and uh, he uh, dreamed it the Lord appeared to him the Lord appeared to him and he saw the vision of heaven. The angels of God ascending and descending. And verse 15 says, Genesis chapter 28 verse 15 says, The Lord said to him, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. Will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Beloved, Probably you might have received some prophecy from the men of God. While reading the Bible, the Lord would have promised, My son, my daughter, I will fulfill this promise from the Bible in your life. And probably so, so many months have gone by, so many years have gone by. You might be troubled, you might be discouraged. Lord, you had promised through your servant, through your word, Lord, that you will bless me with this blessing. But until now, I have not received you. Beloved, the Lord wants to assure you, my son, my daughter, whatever I have spoken to you, I will fulfill it. I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Yes, beloved, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us until he has done oh, what he has spoken because Je this Jesus Christ, the God in flesh, knows the end from the beginning. Another beautiful verse is found in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. There it says, the Lord says, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning, from the ancient times, things that are not yet done.